Here is, uh, oh, as you know, um, why should we play this one first? Uh, Alan Omar uh, has issued an apology, is my understanding, for uh, being, although it was a very good, uh, I thought her apology was pretty good, actually, because it didn't deny, it, it apologized for the use of language. It didn't deny the dynamic that I think uh, we all, um, uh, that, that, everyone knows, which is that there is a uh, an Israeli, a pro, really right-wing Israeli lobby that is largely a, um, not just, uh, you know, it's not exclusively a function of money, but, but is highly fueled by money. And that is essentially what Alan Omar uh, said. I mean, in, in, uh, if there was something uh, that she said that was different from that, I'd be open to it. But let me let me not make this argument. Let me, for the first time in my 15-year <laughs> career of professionally talking about politics, defer and to outsource, if you will, this argument to Thomas Friedman. United case um, in the Supreme Court that um, basically said unlimited campaign donations. Now what that meant is it gave enormous power, I've written all this you know, in my column, to the Israel lobby. Why? Because, Maddie, if you and I are running um, for Congress from the same district, and I have APEC stamp of approval and you don't, I will maybe have to make three phone calls and I can raise my whole, I'm exaggerating, but I don't have to make many phone calls mm. to get all the money I need to run against you. You will have to make 50,000 phone calls. So that pulled the whole spectrum to the right. Then the Israeli government, we had a, a much more conservative government come in. So what I've seen in America is the whole spectrum on the Israel question has moved to the right to the point and this is very disappointing to me, where if you're a young political officer, you're, you're in NEA, our nearest division of the State Department, you dream one day of being ambassador to Oman. Oh, you, I want to be ambassador to Oman, the car, you know, the whole thing. I do. You will not state publicly what is actually official U.S. policy, that Israeli settlements are an obstacle to peace. All right, so there you have it, folks. Um, now... Thomas Friedman uh, laid it out in a slightly uh, different way in this uh, interview with Mehdi Hassan, but uh, that's because he wasn't on Twitter. And uh, Alan Omar uh, said basically the same thing, that our policy towards Israel in this country is a function of money that comes from APAC. How is that different from what Thomas Friedman just said? Well, here's the difference. In fact, um, she, she's she, a Muslim. Well, that's true. Also, I haven't heard her explicitly defend killing unarmed protesters in Gaza. So if you want to talk about APAC funding, you're going to need to buy a little currency by defending Israel killing civilians. She didn't even go as far as, as Friedman did and say that this also intimidates bureaucrats in the U.S. government. Right. She just was talking about uh, the first part of what he said, that if I'm running against you, I can make three phone calls, maybe five. That's right. And get funded. And so, uh, but the idea of there's the, the outrage, uh, but good for her. This is her, um, this was her apology. Anti-Semitism is real, and I'm grateful for Jewish allies and colleagues who are educating me on the painful history of anti-Semitic tropes. My intention is to is never to offend my constituents or Jewish Americans as a whole. We all we have uh, to always be willing to step back and think through criticism, just as I expect people to hear me when others attack me for my identity. This is why I unequivocally apologize. That is uh, a a a very mature apology. She goes on to say at the same time. I reaffirm the problematic role of lobbyists in our politics, whether it be APAC, the NRA, or the fossil fuel industry. It's gone on too long, and we must be willing to address it. So. And, and also, just to and to be clear, I mean that's I, I, I that it's such a perfect response. But I also think like 
one of the reasons that I have, you know, a long, and I don't know what we're calling it because we have like daily conversations and we almost need like a style guide about what we call identity politics. But let me, so, but let me just say it for purposes of simplicity. But one of the reasons that I've always had a real problem and a critique of certain weaponizations of identity over policy is going back a very long time, even just even back to like dinner table conversations on Israel. And the idea that, you know, identity or even serious historical wrongs and contemporary bigotry can overcome the reality of what that state is, is fundamentally wrong. And, you know, and, I, and I'm glad I think she's responding to, you know, the correct impulse that a handful of people had that called out some of what was questionable framing in that tweet. But obviously, a vast majority of what's going on here is profoundly cynical. Trump's just called on her to resign from Congress. And it's time for people to really close ranks and stop the BS and get to the substance. And I mean, there's I don't know if we're going to play it, but it's like even the other end of the spectrum. I'm you know, some people saying like, oh, you know, Amy Klobuchar essentially can do this because she's like a woman. She can abuse her staff. And I and I it's just bizarre. It's really unhealthy. It's it's ridiculous. And people need to and she's handled it with a lot of class and a lot of grace and there's nothing wrong with like i think actually there's really great conversations that people can have and just sort of like upping their game and we should all do that but the substance shouldn't be lost and the fact that this is being unbelievably i mean if you have steve scalise saying good thing she apologized yeah is grotesque about this this notion of of donald trump saying that her apology isn't good enough calling for a resignation steve, steve scalise the guy who literally sold himself as David Duke without the baggage in his early campaigns uh, to be in any way cr criticizing this. Here's Kevin McCarthy. Here's a tweet that Kevin McCarthy put out uh, just days after, what was it, the Pittsburgh, uh, right? Tree of Life Tree of Life murders. Uh, murders. We cannot allow Soros, Steyer, and Bloomberg to buy this election. Get out and vote Republican November 6th. There you go. And of course, that Hashtag actually, Maga, Jesus, and of course what's that. amazing to me is like, that actually is it. Ilan Omar, it is ill considered to tweet. It's to do a. Well, it's all a about the Benjamin. But this is objective she was anti talking semitism. About, yeah, she she was realize. talking about what was influencing policy towards Israel. Here's this. This, I think, uh, maybe someone should educate. Um, anyone from Nancy Pelosi to Donald Trump about this, but uh, Israel and being Jewish is not synonymous. And we can make that argument um, both on the left end of the spectrum with people like myself who do not have payas, but I can also bring in some people who do have payas and make the same argument.